Tulsi Gabbard's critique of Kamala Harris reflects deep concerns about leadership and decision-making, especially in relation to military actions that impact the lives of everyday Americans, particularly those serving in the armed forces. By drawing a parallel between Kamala Harris and Dick Cheney, Gabbard sounds an alarm for voters wary of political figures perceived to support endless wars. This framing taps into a populist narrative that pits political elites against ordinary citizens, positioning Harris as someone who aligns with an agenda responsible for disastrous foreign interventions. I have a very simple message for my Democrat friends, my independent friends, those who may not be sure about who they're voting for in this election. Dick Cheney has just made the choice very clear. A vote for Kamala Harris is a vote for Dick Cheney, the architect of everything that has gone wrong in the Middle East for the last few decades. And so it, it's interesting because if you, if you listen to the New York Times or some of the other mainstream media, they're saying, oh, you know, don't expect much from Kamala Harris in the way of policies and details and plans. And we're not going to know much about what kind of president she's going to be because she doesn't have much time. They're, they're conveniently ignoring the fact that she's been there working in the White House the last three and a half years alongside Joe Biden. She's been the last one in the room, according to her, as these big decisions are being made. But we look at who she says, her response to the Dick Cheney announcement today was that she was honored to have his endorsement. And we got military veterans in the house. We got a lot of you who probably served in the Middle East like I did. And so it, it sickened me, Tucker, to read those words today, both from Dick Cheney, Liz Cheney, and Kamala Harris, because we have people who we care very much about who were killed in those wars because of Dick Cheney. Kamala Harris has told us all we need to know about what kind of commander-in-chief she would be. And I don't know about you, but I would not trust her for a moment with the lives of my brothers and sisters in uniform. Gabbard's portrayal of Cheney as the architect of a failed war in the Middle East resonates with long-standing public skepticism of interventionist foreign policies. Cheney, once a dominant figure in the Republican Party, is now viewed as part of a political class that prioritizes global interests over national sovereignty and the welfare of U.S. military personnel. Gabbard's message conveys a sense of betrayal, arguing that Harris, by seemingly aligning with Cheney's legacy, continues policies that have led to unnecessary loss of life and prolonged instability in the Middle East. At the heart of Gabbard's criticism is a conservative focus on national security, responsible use of military force, and the prevention of avoidable conflicts. Her emphasis on protecting brothers and sisters in uniform highlights the moral weight of sending soldiers into war zones where they risk their lives. This concern taps into the public's distrust of politicians perceived as part of the establishment, especially those influenced by corporate or military-industrial interests. By invoking Cheney as a symbol of the forces responsible for controversial wars, Gabbard stokes frustration among voters who feel betrayed by policies that seem to prioritize geopolitical strategy over human lives. She positions Harris as an extension of these vested interests, arguing that her values do not align with the protection of U.S. soldiers or the nation's best interests. This emotional appeal is directed at veterans and their families, many of whom have experienced firsthand the consequences of the wars Cheney helped orchestrate. Through this lens, Gabbard argues that Harris, by association, cannot be trusted to safeguard the lives of U.S. troops or prioritize the well-being of the nation. 